السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most gracious the most merciful الحمد لله رب العالمين all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the creator of entire creation والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد we send blessings and salutations upon all the messengers of the Almighty who were sent from the beginning all the way down to Muhammad, peace be upon him, his companions, may Allah bless them, his household, may Allah bless them. May he bless every one of us and grant us goodness. Before I commence, I'd like to mention one or two very, very interesting things. Firstly, the weather is superb, so thank Allah. It's as though Allah has favored us and it's as though he has facilitated this in a way that we wouldn't have an excuse not to thank him for the beautiful weather this evening in Doha, Qatar. Alhamdulillah. Secondly, I must thank every one of you, male and female, young and old, for having made the time and taken the effort to come here this evening. And that is in the form of a prayer for you. May Allah bless you and grant you goodness and ease in whatever you may be going through. May Allah grant you the purification of your own heart in a way that you achieve contentment in this world and the next. Amin. Say Amin. The reason I pray for you is because. The turnout is overwhelming this evening. MashaAllah, congratulations. Mabrook and Mubarak. May Allah bless you. It was easy for you to have said during this age of technological advancement that we're going to sit home, we'll see the live, you know, it's here and it's there and we'll check what it's all about. But I promise you to attain the peace and contentment from Allah and the blessings that are descending right now from the heavens that we are taught from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when we gather for his sake in order to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those blessings will not be tasted unless you're physically there and you have made an effort. So therefore, it is highly highly commendable alhamdulillah also any dua you have any problems you have any difficulties you have say them now within yourself allah will bless you it's a moment of goodness and blessings of allah forgiveness right now we're all gathered brothers and sisters from different nationalities in large numbers with such beautiful silence lovely weather the moon up there and amazing ambience we definitely should not lose the chance to call out to Allah in our own silence for the needs that we have. May Allah bless you with the fulfillment of your needs, whatever they are. Amin. That having been said, my brothers and sisters, we're talking about getting closer to Allah, getting acquainted to Allah, understanding the greatness of Allah through his signs. And what are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are so many starting with, and I could start with the creation of man, but Allah's signs extend even before the creation of man. Let's start with that creation. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ إِذَا أَنْتُمْ Surah number 30, verse number 20. Surah to Rum, verse number 20. Allah says, From His signs, from the great signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is your creation. He created you from dust. Now, one might say, Why did Allah choose to create me from dust? Well, that's up to Allah. He decided it and no one has a say in the decision of Allah. It's his choice, his decision. The fact that I'm here today, my value would be worse than the value of dust if I didn't recognize who made me and try to develop a relationship with him. And my value would be higher than that of dust and even much higher than 
my imagination if I spent my time developing my relationship with that Allah. So Allah says one of the signs to recognize that you have a maker is that you came from somewhere. We created you from the dust and you know what we did? Thereafter, we caused you to disperse on earth. You actually multiplied on earth. You actually went all over. Today, we have the children of Adam who was one man and Eve or Hawa may peace and blessings be upon them. The two of them, we are all their children, but we have nationalities, we have races, ethnicities, we're different parts of the globe. The weather is good in some places and not in some, and they have different circumstances, different issues, different languages, and all that part of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should recognize him through all of this. Sit and ponder. If you knew your great, great, great grandfather, and thereafter you had a family tree checking what happened. And if you had approximately seven to 10 children in each generation from each person, may Allah bless us all with offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. Now I know people have one or two kids and they're done. You know why? It's become more difficult to take care of the children. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. Say, Ameen. So what happens? When we see this family tree and how we have dispersed, it gives us a very, very small idea of how on a global level, we're actually one big family, but we no longer feel that. May Allah forgive us. So Allah keeps reminding us many places in the Quran, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has reminded that to us in many places in his words, in his teachings, in the hadith, to say, you are but one family. That's why, khayrun nasi anfa'uhum lin nasi. The best of all of you is the best to the rest of you. Subhanallah. Not just to the Muslims. Notice, the best of man is he or she who is the best from amongst you to the rest of man. Why? You're one family. Like I want goodness for myself, I need to want it for everyone else. Many people, when you tell them about Allah, they don't want to listen. They are fed up, they are tired. But if you were to be kind to them through the kindness, they would actually listen to what you have to say. We have a sister amongst us. We have a sister, I think of Moroccan origin, who was, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to relate the story in the, the best way I can remember it. She's with us this evening. I just met her a few moments ago. She was sitting in public transport and she was laughing at something. And there was another lady who looked at her laughing and became keen on wanting to know what she was listening to. And she happened to put those earphones into her own ears, if I'm not mistaken. And guess what? She was listening to one of my own lectures. Subhanallah. And this woman who perhaps didn't even want to know about Islam, had given up about Islam and so on, Allah wanted her to listen to something. How did it come about? When you see the contentment on the face of a person, the happiness that people are searching for, the globe is looking for contentment. That contentment can only come from the owner of it, who is Allah. So you might not want to listen to me if I said Allah said this and Allah said that. But when you see the result of the connection with Allah in others, you become keen to know what is it that has driven these people to Allah or to, to this contentment. And you will come to realize or know that it is indeed their connection with their maker. We are happy upon all conditions. I have a habit and I'm developing it still because every one of us needs to develop good habits. That habit is Alhamdulillah, when things happen your way according to your plan. And Alhamdulillah, twice when they do not happen according to your plan, you must smile at the fact that the Almighty has taken that away from you and He has the control. So He is in charge and He has made a decision that has overridden yours. So Alhamdulillah, twice. I love Him. My existence is owed to Him. So if He doesn't want something I want, I'm more excited than if what I wanted were to happen. Subhanallah. That's contentment, inshallah. We are still praying to get more and more of it. Something went totally wrong. You need to believe there is a broader picture. There is something bigger. You don't just get angry. It's your time, like I always say, to shine. It's your time to shine. People are desperately in need of great character. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad when he was described by Allah himself, 
وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم Allah could have described him in any way but Allah says you know what you are upon azim akhlaq azima you are upon character and conduct that that is great the greatest level of character and conduct that was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was upon that it was so refreshing at the time on on the earth that they were living in so refreshing to see someone who was content he was happy he was so excited he was happier than all of them and that was because of his recognition of allah and his relationship with allah therefore the people came in one after the other and they started accepting the message remember when you want to promote your your deen your islam a lot of the times people have or who have the enmity they're not going to want to listen to what islam is all about but they will take a page from you your character your conduct your success your achievement your dedication and so on and then they will become inquisitive as to what ex what exactly you stand for subhanallah many of us think i need to sit with someone and say right i want you to be a muslim please come here that's not going to work you know what? They don't even want to hear the word Muslim and Islam sometimes. So my brothers and sisters, Allah tells us from among his signs is the fact that he created you. You're one family. I love people. I love all people. Those I agree with, those I don't agree with. Yes, there are deeds that I dislike. There are things that people do that I don't like, but I still love the person and I still have hope in the person. And where I'm wrong, I'd like to believe that people won't hate on me, but perhaps they will dislike a wrong thing that I'm doing and help me, tap me on my shoulders. No matter how big you think you are, Sheikh, you are wrong. Wow, I think I'd smile at that. I'd be so happy and excited to say, you know what? They love me. They've proven their love. They didn't go out and Instagram it and Facebook it. I have a habit as well. When someone insults you publicly, normally their intention proves not to be so clean. But when they come to you privately and explain something or say something, you can engage them a little bit more because they happen to be genuine. The idea is not to disgrace you, but rather to improve you, to help you. So look at the importance of this character. Look at the importance of understanding where one wanting goodness for others, just like you want it for yourself. When the narration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li ma yuhibbu li nafsihi. None of you are true believers until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Subhanallah. What, would, what do you love for yourself? That's a whole big question. So my brothers and sisters, the Almighty reminds us of this common beginning and the start from one person coming to another and then a third and a fourth and a fifth and so many and then generations upon generations and we don't even know how many generations we have actually lost count. But we are part of the family. I've seen many of you, brothers and sisters, this evening. The excitement, trust me, I'm going to say something, right? I am more excited to see you than you are to see me because I know what we're going to share today. If it brings us closer to Allah, one centimeter, we all have contributed towards earning the mercy of Allah that will get us into Jannah. Why shouldn't I be excited? Why shouldn't I be so excited? I'm happy. You made the effort to come. I will stand here. I will pray to Allah. I'll ask Allah to guide me first to be able to practice upon what I am saying and then everybody else. And that's the beauty of the deen. I cannot be preaching down as though I am a sinless person who's perfect. No one is perfect. Not at all. Subhanallah. Perfection is for Allah. Perfection is for Allah. But I will try to improve myself and carry myself in a way that when people see me, they want to be or to take the goodness that I may be beaming or living by or be similar. And even correct me if I'm wrong, subhanallah. So Allah reminds us of this. It's a sign of Allah. It should draw you closer to Allah. My brothers and sisters, when your heart is filled with love, it will automatically draw you to Allah because you begin to realize people's sufferings are all quite similar. You may have, what can I say? I can draw up a list of 30 things that can go wrong in the lives of the bulk of us, not 31. 
30 things. If I were to jot down those 30 things, 90% of us would actually fit into those 30. You can have social problems, economic problems, you can have uh, health problems, you can have emotional issues, family issues, considered social, etc., etc. What else are you going to suffer? Subhanallah. The distress you have, trust me, others have it in a bigger way, but they are patient. Why? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabri was salah inna Allah ma'as sabirin O you who believe seek help and assistance through patience a beautiful patience and through prayer keep on calling to Allah People say well I've called out to Allah for a long long time when is his help going to come I can tell you when his help is going to come when Bilal ibn Rabah and I mentioned this at the Jum'ah today when Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu an was being dragged through the hot desert of Mecca and he was being punished and penalized at that juncture he knew that Allah had a bigger plan, but he didn't know exactly what that plan was that made him become reassured that I'm going to keep on saying Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad. I will not give up my faith. I will not give up my faith. I believe in one maker. I believe in Allah alone. I'm not giving this up no matter how much persecution I'm suffering. Never did he imagine at that moment that you bear patience 20 years down the line. We're going to make you so high that you're going to come to the same Kaaba in the same masjid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Calling out the Adhan. Who was that? The same man they were dragging a few years earlier. How many? Approximately 20. What happened? The patience they had for 20 years resulted in the victory. My brothers and sisters, our patience is only two minutes. Two minutes. After two minutes, we say, but I made a dua. Look, it's not coming. It's not going to plop through the ceiling, please. Allahu Akbar. Allah wants you to gain closeness to him a little bit more. The ones we loved the most 20 years. Yusuf alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, all these prophets of Allah, take a look at what they went through. What happened? They recognized Allah through these signs. What was the sign? Hardship is a sign. Difficulty is a sign. We've come on earth in order to prove ourselves to Allah. That's what it is. Therefore, test after test after test after test. Just like when you go into a school, you're not going for... To pass your time you have to study you have to work you'll have exam upon exam a difficult one once you pass that one more difficult once you pass that one one which is even more difficult then you get a degree then you get a higher degree the higher you go the more difficult it becomes you consider it a challenge why you want a certificate of this world in order to get into a job of your choice we need a certificate of this world in order to get into jannatul firdaus the tests will be tougher and tougher the closer you are to allah the bigger the tests become so when Allah has tested you thank him and thank him again sign of Allah is the test that he puts in your life you have a health matter there are people who have a bigger health problem but they are happy with Allah they are happy with Allah look at the Prophet Sallallahu you know what he said he said oh Allah for as long as you're not angry with me or upset with me I'm okay I'm happy subhanallah can we say that may Allah make it easy for us so Allah says this one of the signs is he created you all of you from one source and then you beamed across the globe don't forget that let it get let it make you get closer to Allah through understanding what your relationship is moments ago we heard about the other creatures of Allah the dog for example the common factor between us is that's also a creature of the same maker so when you so when you show compassion towards the other animals it goes to show you respect the one who gave life to these animals. Subhanallah. Where are the vets from amongst us? Mashallah. They're also doing a good job. Many people look at doctors and say, wow, these doctors are doing a brilliant job. We met a lovely brother, mashallah, top doctor. And subhanallah, the dua flows from the heart, you know. We need these people. But wallahi, we need everyone. Everyone. Allah has created us such that each one of us needs each other for different things. Just like the doctor cannot live without bread, he needs the baker. The baker will not live without 
perhaps something else. He needs the plumber. He needs the electrician. So we all need each other. And the animals as well. You know, sometimes what happens, we become so, so forgetful that the cats around us, that we see in large numbers and the dogs, the compassion you're going to show towards them to a small degree will actually work in your favor in a huge way. But we don't look at it that way. For us, it's a pain. It's a this, it's a that. Yes, it may be. But deal with it compassionately. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying don't get rid of your problems. No, deal with it with compassion. Don't be a person who inflicts harm on a creature of Allah that shows your closeness to Allah. These are signs of Allah. If Allah wanted, he wouldn't have had those there. Not at all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, firstly, he spoke about the sign being that he created you and I. He created all of us from dust. And suddenly we spread on this earth. Then you know what he says? وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Many of us know that verse and we smile when we read it before marriage. Alhamdulillah. Why? We say, oh, from the signs of Allah is that He has created for you, from you, spouses who will be what? So who will, whom you will achieve comfort, solace through. So Allah says, yeah, we want you to be taking it easy, comfortable, relax, filled with love, compassion. Through who? Your spouse. So you find all the young people reading this verse, oh, mashallah, what happens when you get married? It's like that verse don't exist sometimes. Astaghfirullah. May Allah make it easy. May Allah grant us happiness. We need to revisit who is my spouse. A daughter of a beloved person, a member of a family, and in the case of the husband, the son of someone respectful, a person who has a family unit, a person who's placed in my responsibility, in my care, or with me to live together, perhaps to have children together by the will of Allah, and to be able to reproduce so that by the time we go, we've left a generation of wonderful people on earth, who are going to be serving the rest of humanity, thereby earning the pleasure of the Almighty and worshipping the Almighty alone, teaching, training, etc. Many of us are parents before we've even become responsible within our own lives. So therefore, we struggle. But Allah says, you know what? That moment of marriage is such that automatically at that moment, there is something that happens. Listen to this. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً He has put between you at that moment something called mawadda, which is a very high level of love, and something called rahma, which is the mercy. You feel connected to your spouse. Remember I said here initially, right? Right at the beginning, okay? It's up to you to nurture that, to grow it and make sure you don't lose it. But rather build on it such that 10 years later, 20 years later, and wallahi, there are so many of us who can say, I'm far happier, far more in love with my spouse today than I was 10 years or 20 years ago. If you can say that, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, you're a responsible person who's understood the plan of Allah. Focus on what you have. If one person, if one woman, if, if your own family can actually say, wow, this person is the best person they could be. Trust me, it's better than a hundred people saying, yeah, this guy is just a womanizer. May Allah forgive us. This guy is just a this and a that. Come on, be responsible. It's a sign of Allah. It is sacred. Allah says you should be getting closer to me through your connection with your spouse. Subhanallah. Together, you should remind each other about Allah. You should think for yourself. Imagine the signs of Allah. The embryo, the fetus, childbirth. All of those are topics on their own, but they are signs of Allah. What happened? Ask those who don't have children. They will tell you how desperately they are trying. May Allah make it easy for them and bless them with offspring. And then when we have these children, guess what? We take it for granted. How do we take it for granted? 
It's like nothing ever happened. We don't even spend time with them. We have no method of speaking to them. We have no connection to them. We have no communication with them. And we want to gain closeness to Allah. Allah says, that was a sign. Come on. That was a sign. My brothers and sisters, the signs within us that should be moving us closer to Allah are so many. We haven't even prayed for them. We haven't ever asked the Almighty for most of the things we have. You know, when we pray to the Almighty, we ask Him, Oh Allah, grant me this. Oh Allah, grant me that. What happens? We start crying. Like I said, we want the answer in two minutes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you billions of things without you asking. Look at your eyes. Today you're looking at me, mashallah. I'm looking at you, subhanallah. Did you ask Allah, oh Allah, give me eyes. You had those eyes. Oh Allah, give me this and that. You didn't have the problem. You're breathing without knowing you're breathing. Subhanallah. We're talking. We have a tongue. With the tongue tastes. Everything else happens. Have you asked Allah, oh Allah, grant me nails. Give me, you know, ears with, that can hear. We've already got that. Oh Allah, protect these ears of mine. Many of us haven't even thought to thank Allah for these things. And Allah says, all I want to you to do is just pray five times a day. Be a good person, be honest, fulfill your pillars and make sure that you try your best to stay away from those things which are bad for you that we've just made prohibited. We still think, nah, not going to do that. How dare the Almighty gave you your hands, your legs, your, the feet, the toes, every little detail, the identity of every person, the iris of every person from the beginning to the end, from Adam to the last person is different. Your thumbprint, different, everything different. Allah created you and you, unique, totally unique. Be proud of how Allah has made you. I'm not talking of the pride that's filled with arrogance, but the pride that is connected to happiness. Be happy. Allah made me. I love my color. I love my hair. I love my, the race. I love the ethnicity. I love where I come from. And that's Allah who made me that. Alhamdulillah. I'm not embarrassed about anything. And I will live and those who are true human beings will appreciate me for who I am. That's a sign of Allah. You get closer to Allah by appreciating others. When you see someone darker than you in complexion, perhaps they may be closer to Allah than you. Take a moment to smile at them. Take a moment to greet them. It's a sign you've understood the maker who made you and them the same. Respect them and they will respect you. When you get into paradise, you might be surprised to see some of those whom you may have through weakness considered lower on earth, higher than you by far. May Allah bless all of us. So Allah says, Inna fi thalika la ayatin li yatafakkaroon. The issue of the spouses being created for us by Allah from amongst us and the creation of love and mercy between us, those are signs only for those who ponder and think. Like I told you at the beginning, when you're getting married, the excitement is so much, you have to build on that. Both of you have to build on that. Make sure that you have lived your life in a way that after your marriage, you become closer as time passes, not drifting away. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ from the signs of the Almighty. Now he's showing you something greater than the creation of man. But he's showing it to you after he spoke about the creation of man. He says, you know what? From the signs of the Almighty. The creation of the skies, the skies and the earth. And the differences in your colors and complexions and your languages. Imagine we are part of one family, not only the dialect being different, the language is different. If I were to go to China, would I ever think for a moment, these are my brothers, my sisters, one mother, one father at some point up the line. Subhanallah, we don't even think that way. When they say Ni hao, what happens? We just look at them. And when we, when we say something, they just look at us. You're lucky now because the globe has become a little village and because of Google and the translate and everything else, it's so become easy. But Allah says one of the signs of Allah is how different your languages are, 
how you are from one, but look how different you've become over time. Over time, the East speaks a language, the West speaks a language. Subhanallah. These languages and how they work and where they come from, you know, speaking English. And I remember thinking about it a few years ago when I, you know, someone volunteered to actually correct me whenever I go wrong in my lectures from a grammatical perspective and from a linguistic perspective. And I felt so honored that someone actually did this for me. Mashallah. May Allah reward this person and grant them goodness. And I used to think to myself, well, if they understand what I'm saying, what's the big deal of, you know, how you're saying it? But I realize to speak with simple language reaches those whose language might not be so high. So keep it simple. Wow, that's one lesson I learned. And then from the issue of Tajweed of the Quran, you learn something else. In every language, if you were to speak clearly, you are appreciated much more than those who just speak like this, you know. You are appreciated much more. Those who want to speak without any form of thinking of the pronunciation of these words. So do it properly. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says Allah loves that when a person does something, they perfect it, they do it properly. If you don't want to do it properly, leave it for others. Subhanallah. But Allah says it's a sign of Allah. You speak different languages and these languages will help you communicate. You know, when you don't have the means to communicate, what happens? Your sign language is actually misunderstood completely. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I remember a brother who went to Albania. Some of you from Albania might know this, might know meaning if I'm right or wrong. And he said that I didn't know that when you nod your head, it's actually a no. And when you shake your head, it's actually a yes. And I kept asking them questions and, and they were saying to me, no, but to them it was yes. And I was baffled, subhanallah, until someone said, no, they're actually saying yes, yes, yes. Imagine. And then you go to India and there is a, a little movement of the head that you don't, you just don't understand, subhanallah. Whether it's a yes or a no, I really don't know, subhanallah. You know, it could be okay, it could be not okay. But if I'm smiling, it's okay. And if I'm frowning, it's not okay. May Allah grant us ease. This is a sign that people communicate in unique ways. You will misunderstand it, subhanAllah. People were actually clapping because they must have been Indian, right? MashaAllah. <laughs> May Allah bless you guys. Bless all of us, MashaAllah. I enjoy it. I enjoy watching people. And I enjoy seeing, appreciating, smiling at them when they think, gosh, with that beard, you're not supposed to have smiled. It's okay. I've got braces. We're sorting the teeth out as well, inshallah. My brothers and sisters, how beautiful is the deen? We make it tough for ourselves. Allah shows us signs in everything, everything. These signs are not just for us to say, wow, but rather to get closer to the Almighty. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Look at what the Almighty's made. Look at what He's done. Allah says, you know what? The skies, the earth, how we've got the mountains and everything else and how every detail is the almighty after that tells us when we ponder over his creation this is the creation of the almighty show me what those besides allah have created subhanallah Allah says, this is the creation of the Almighty. Show me what those besides Allah have created. Allah says, we made, we gave. We want you to ponder. We want you to think. And this is why to sit and ponder is an act of worship. Just to sit and think, ah, oh, subhanAllah, look at this. You know, I was the wind, the weather today. Amazing, amazing. How many times people predict there will be rains, there will be floods, there will be this, there will be that. And sometimes the Almighty doesn't let that happen. These predictions are obviously just predictions based on study. A lot of the times these studies happen to be accurate to a certain degree, but the Almighty shows you we override. The weather will be beautiful even though they said you're not going to be able to have this function tonight. But the weather is so beautiful, mashallah, tabarakallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these signs are supposed to bring you closer to Allah. And this is why these are signs for those who have knowledge. If you have knowledge, if you are ready to think, you're ready to ponder, these are the signs. 
ان في خلق السماوات والارض واختلاف الليل والنهار لايات لاولي الالباب indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the turning of the night and the day you know when the day becomes short the night becomes long when the night is long the day becomes short wow i remember giving that example as how husband and wife should be one has a slight shortfall the other covers up and the other one has a slight shortfall this one covers up subhanallah that was an example i recall giving and the idea is we should be helping each other in our lives but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no when it comes to the earth when it comes to the heavens when it comes to the movement of the day and the night that split moment is a sign for you look i want to tell you something sunrise sunset by the split second is known why we know the moon and the sun will not disobey allah when man tells you he will be there at 8 30 at 9 30 he might just pitch up subhanallah mashallah see she is smiling we let him down yesterday mashallah don't worry i'm just letting you know that's man we're not the sun we're not the moon we try and we should try inshallah one thing positive about humankind when you know sunset is at 6 30 it will never happen at 6 25 but at least i might come at 8 25 next time mashallah do you get my point may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease the reality is these creatures of allah work like clockwork imagine if one of these creatures decided today i don't want it's not going to happen subhanallah and then look at the planets we're discovering things every day that we never knew because allah says in the quran we will keep showing them signs in the horizons and within themselves until it is proven beyond doubt to them that the Quran is the truth, your Lord is the truth, and indeed everything we've said is the truth. What are these signs? Well, every day we're discovering, like we said, the first picture of the black hole has come out. Have you seen the planets billion times the size of the earth? And we think we're a big deal. Subhanallah, we think we're a big deal. Have you seen how some of these stars are destroyed and crushed? And they are thousands of times bigger than the earth, millions and billions of times. Subhanallah, I remember reading that the closest star, and we see these stars every day, is four and a half light years away. Right? That means when I look at the star right now, it's not there now, but I can see it now because the light is only coming. It took four and a half years to come to me. Okay? So that was there four and a half years ago. And right now, hey, look at the star. And we're all looking at it. What's going on? It's not even there. And you're seeing it. Subhanallah. Amazing. This is the power of Allah. And the rest of the stars are even further away. And we think we're a big deal. Man, you're so small. It's best to just get closer to Allah. And look how beautiful Allah is. He created us. And I must say this. Some of you may have heard it in my talks. But I'm going to tell you something that you need to hear again and again. How many of you remember the time you were in your mother's wombs? No one. Not even me. Not even me. I repeat that because Sheikh Omar was saying some of us might have been born, you know, saying, Salam alaikum, I'm already a scholar here, you know. No, it didn't happen that way. We don't remember. But guess what? We were definitely there. Nowadays, you have little videos and 3D images that some parents are keeping and showing their children later. That was you, you know. That was you. Like, like yeah, yeah, I remember the Mars bar when my mom ate it. I really enjoyed it that day. Yeah, it was quite nice. Do you remember? Don't you guys remember? When your mom had the milkshake or, you know, from the, the cafe down the road with a lot of uh, sugar in it. Wasn't it cool? Don't you remember that? No, you don't. Why? 
But you know you were there and you know definitely you spent nine months there. For you, that was everything. It was the whole world. Everything in this womb. You were swimming from where to where and slowly growing, but you enjoyed it. It was warm, your comfort zone. Little did you know that there is a thin membrane between you and the world that you have never seen. You are within your mother. A day will come when suddenly you will see that mother. But at that point, you knew nothing. As you grew older and bigger, what happened? When I say older, I'm talking of within the nine months. You, you found that you couldn't move anymore. All doom and gloom, right? It's coming to an end. Imagine twins speaking to each other. Hey, what's happening? I can't move anymore, right? So now you can't move anymore. So what's up? Ah, goodbye. I think we're gone. That's it. Death. We're out of here. There's no more. Nothing to come. And just when you thought that there was nothing to come, suddenly, boom. And you came out into the world. Whoa. What's this? And your buddy who was with you, hey, you here as well. Subhanallah. But I thought there was nothing inside. There was nothing to come. Yeah. Labor. May Allah make it easy for the mothers. Close to death. And guess what? Life came into existence pain but it was forgotten as soon as we saw the bundle of what do they call it joy if only you knew what would happen 18 years down Allah forgive us but subhanallah we got so happy and you know what imagine with me I don't even remember because Allah says you know for a fact you were there but you cannot remember anything you cannot even remember the moment that you came on earth but when you came on earth oh it was so different you started crying oh so different i can't believe it i i couldn't even move i was excited at one stage it was my whole world but there was a thin membrane between you and this life in the same way my brothers and sisters when you get old in this life allah says there is a thin membrane between you and the real eternal life boom and one day suddenly <gasps> subhanallah is this what akhirah is all about whoa hey what about you you what are you doing here in the same way subhanallah may allah gather us in jannah say amen why lose hope in the mercy of allah if we knew how hopeless we might have been in the wombs of our mothers and then we came onto this earth we would never lose hope in what's about to happen the one who took care of us from the womb into this life will definitely take care of us from this life into the next which is eternal and again just a little membrane just like labor differs from person to person in its length the same applies to sakaratul maut and the end and the pangs of death some people boom and it was so easy i know of some people you know, a brother phones, Sheikh, make dua. My wife is going into labor. I say, Insha'Allah, may Allah make it easy. 15 minutes later, mashallah, I got a boy. <laughs> wow, mashallah. That was good. Was, it, was everything okay? Yeah, normal delivery. I say, don't tell people it was just 15 minutes. Why? They may forget to say, mashallah, tabarakallah. Next time it'll be 15 hours. Right? And you know, others are in labor for days. Wallahi, the same thing happens in Sakarat. Some, boom, and they're gone. They're just standing and... And sometimes they're even smiling. May Allah grant us a good death. And sometimes people are in Sakarat for days. And they're, they're going and they're struggling. And whatever else happens, may Allah make it easy for us. But just like I'm convinced. And I am convinced that when I came from there into this world, Allah took care of me. I know He's going to take care of me from now. Isn't that a sign of Allah? Isn't that a grand sign of Allah? When people tell me, you know what, please make dua that my cat comes with me to Jannah. And by the way, that happens every day I receive emails about whether my pet's going to be with me in paradise or not. And, and it's become more and more and more and more people are getting connected to pets rather than people. Because people have started letting down others so badly that even your dog doesn't let you down. It's a reality. So they prefer the dog to be with them in paradise than the guy or someone else who's even a family member sometimes when they've let them down so badly. To solve that, try not to let people down yourself. Help people. Be an asset. When people see you, they should be happy. They should really want to hear what you have to say. And they should want to see you. They know that if something happens, this person's genuine. May Allah make us that way. So the true answer is, you know what? Don't worry. Get to Jannah. Get to Jannah. Once you are there, 
then whatever you think about at that point you will have and I remember just now that I've given you the example I remember telling one young man imagine in the womb of your mother if you had really loved something she ate and enjoyed it and you said hey if, if you had the idea that one day you're gonna go into another place I wish I have this when I go there imagine if there was a sheikh you could say when I get into the world can I please have this trust me if that fluid was given to you today you would puke are you listening to the example I'm giving you something you may have liked in the previous like existence or a different level of this life that which was within the womb you will probably puke if someone offered it to you today and you still want to say oh Allah I want this and this and this and this in the world it's like a person asking for a mobile phone the P30 of the Huawei for example and you know what the very next year when the 40 is out they won't want that 30 may Allah make it easy for us this aircraft that's flying above look at how the Almighty has allowed it to go through people might say it's man man's brain and who gave man the brain anyway what was the sin of Karun Karun related his achievements to himself and forgot that the Almighty gave him the brain that he thought with not all of us have the same understanding that's a plan of Allah because if we all had the same understanding life would be boring we wouldn't be able to earn rewards for teaching people because they would all have been know-it-alls right but Allah says no everyone is different even in wealth Allah says we have given some of you virtue over others when it comes to sustenance and your wealth why it's a test for those who have to see what they're going to do are they going to become arrogant are they going to become haughty are they going to reach out to those who don't etc etc and it's a test for those who don't have will they go away from Allah are they going to resort to stealing what are they going to do will it bring them closer to Allah etc etc all this is a test these are signs of the Almighty my brothers and sisters don't be deceived and a day will come when we return to Allah be convinced that conviction within you that the mercy of Allah encompasses everything. Allah says, and my mercy encompasses absolutely everything. Be convinced within you. Once you seek the forgiveness of Allah and you try your best to develop a relationship with He who made you in the first place, the day you return to Him, just know that He's going to look at you with the eye of mercy. Don't become despondent. Don't let the devil make you think for a moment that you are a goner. You are beyond repair. You are far from being able to achieve the mercy of Allah. No, you will achieve the mercy of Allah. It's a sign of Allah. One of the signs of Allah is he is a tawab, the oft forgiving, the one who forgives so often. It's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ مَنَامُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَابْتِغَاءُكُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ One of the signs of the Almighty is your sleep. And in that sleep, guess what? You dream. Have you ever thought of it? A dream. It's amazing. Nobody can explain a dream up to this day. Nobody can explain it fully. People have a few things they've said about it, but nobody's explained the dream. The Almighty says, that's our sign. What do you do? You go to sleep. What happens? You are sleeping and you're seeing a dream. It's as good as real. Subhanallah. You are dreaming that someone gave you 10 million real and the guy next to you is dreaming that someone stole 10 million real from him and he wakes up and he says, hey buddy, someone stole my money. He says, well, someone gave me the money. He cannot take you to the court, but it was so real. Subhanallah. I recall a guy who was being offered a crunchy. You know what's a crunchy? It was one of my favorite chocolates when I was little, subhanallah. He was being offered a crunchy and he says, no, I want two. He says, no, I want two. And the guy says, just take this one. He says, no, I want two. And suddenly his eye opens, he quickly closes and says, okay, just give me the one. It's all right, fine. Just give me the one. It's fine. No, subhanallah. 
It was so real, right? But you were sleeping. Allah says, that's one of the signs of Allah. Your sleep during the night, during the day, subhanAllah, amazing. During the day, do you know what you're doing? You're actually going out, ibtigha, fadlillah. Look at how Allah created the night for sleep and the day for work. And this is why those who turn that upside down fully, sometimes they struggle with their health because they've turned things upside down. May Allah make it easy for those who are on night shift. I mean, but Allah says, look, to go out to earn, if Allah wanted, he could have put plates of food and goodness in front of you. You see, I was born somewhere on earth and you were born somewhere on earth. We have exactly equal rights to be on earth. Nobody on earth can claim that he is more entitled to be on earth than the other because we were all created in the same way. We were born on the earth. The earth belongs to us from who? From our maker. So we all are entitled to our space on earth. But Allah says, hang on, you're going to have to work. When you came on here, you came without clothing. When you are going from here, you're going to go without clothing. Out of respect, we're going to allow you to be enshrouded. In fact, you should be. That's it. But you take nothing. And you know what? You came with nothing. Everything that happened was here. You're going to leave it here. Whatever you saw here, it's like what happened in the womb. Whatever was in the womb, there. I'm talking of whatever you might have consumed and whatever you might have benefited from in terms of nutrients, etc., etc. Once you're born, the purpose is over. So once you die, the purpose of this worldly life is over. There is a new eternal life with goodness, with greatness, eternity, the mercy of the Almighty, paradise. The Almighty says you will get what you want. Do you know why? On earth, we didn't give that to you. Amazing. So this is why the Almighty says, you know what? These are the signs. When you go to sleep, it's called al maut al sughra You know, a, a, a small type of death. It's a type of death. Actually, your soul, its connection with the body is such that when I'm alive, yes, when I'm awake, it's connected completely, quite fully. But there is a time during my sleep when it is detached in a way Allah knows best. And if a person's death is written, the soul is just kept away if the death is written in the sleep. Amazing. Amazing. And what were you looking at? Ah, beautiful dreams. May Allah grant us lovely dreams, mashallah. Normally, when you're not fighting with yourself and so on, you get good dreams. Your adhkar, remember them. Praise Allah. Thank Allah. Be a content person. And you'll have beautiful dreams. These are signs of the Almighty. Absolutely amazing. And they should draw us closer to the Almighty. And the next verse, do you know what the Almighty says? One of his signs, the signs of Allah, from his signs that the heavens and the earth are being held by his command. They are in existence by his command. When he wants it to be destroyed, it will be destroyed. Just like some of the planets, some of the stars, they're destroyed by Allah, gone. Some of them, you know, they hit each other and suddenly there's a big bang and everything is destroyed. A day may come if Allah and when Allah chooses to end this creation, he will do what he wants and how he wants it. We just know his instruction shall bring things to an end. Just like his instruction brought things into existence. That's the Almighty. So the Almighty says, think about it. Think about it. Pondering over this, there are signs for those with sound intellect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. You know, I was given 50 minutes to speak. I've actually spoken for 53 minutes. I think uh, we had two aircraft pass from here so we can go into injury time. Is that fine? Inshallah. My brothers and sisters, may Allah bless every one of you. Once again, I really say the effort that you've made to be out here today is highly commendable. Let's see ourselves in greater numbers tomorrow because I want to end by telling you just like you have come here and you will achieve that contentment. You will feel very good because you've interacted with real people. It's an opportunity and a chance to meet others, to smile at them, to talk to them. Nice, good things. Don't be rude. Don't ask personal questions. Imagine meeting a sister and saying, oh, sister, 
you're looking quite good. How much do you weigh? <laughs> Gosh, what question is that? How foolish is that? Don't embarrass people. Don't start asking people silly questions. But the fact that you interact with real people, it's a different feeling away from that mobile device of yours. Wow. May Allah grant us ease. But if you were to encourage 10 others to come with you, you earn a tenfold reward. And if any one of them were to gain a millimeter of closeness to Allah, you would increase your chances of entering Jannah through the mercy of the Almighty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. May we be from among those who encourage each other to do good, inshallah. In a few moments, we will be seated here, inshallah, all of the speakers. And we will have a beautiful, interactive, personal, uh, as they say, up and personal session with these speakers. And I pray that we can all benefit from it. Shukran. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.